Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hello family, welcome to the ever-increasing word feast. Abel Damina is my name. I want to first of all commend those of you that have tirelessly followed the teaching of God's word on this platform. Morning, afternoon, night, every day in the last few years. And I have discovered that since we dedicated ourselves to bringing you the word of his grace consistently on this platform, we are noticing a lot of spiritual growth and explosion in the life of believers around the world. And we thank God for the blessing of social media. Today is going to be powerful. Do me a favor today. Invite a friend, a family, a loved one to hook up to this broadcast. Share the broadcast on your page. Please share the broadcast. We are aggressively on a campaign to flood the blue marble planet with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. So share the broadcast. Take the message. Drop them in WhatsApp groups. We are committed to Jesus Christ and his finished work. And as a mark of honor to him, we are aggressively invading every man's world with the goodness of Jesus Christ through the gospel of the kingdom. Let me also mention, for those of you that have followed for some time, if you do not have a church where you belong, it is not right for you to be isolated. The Bible says, he that isolates himself rages against all judgment. You need a family a family of God, a church, a gathering together, a local assembly where you can assemble with other brethren and eat the word of God together, grow together, you know, go for evangelism, bring in new converts, disciple them, watch them grow. Because when you begin to grow in the things of the spirit, you become selfless. Selfishness goes and selflessness is where service comes, where you want to be a blessing, you want to belong to a local church. Now, if you're in an area where there's no Power City Campus, and you don't belong to any local church, and you're looking for a gathering of believers who are feeding from this same table, send an email to me today, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. We will try to connect you with one, and if there's none around your area, we'll see how to start one immediately, because it is vital for you not to dismiss the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some people is. It's so important. I'll be expecting to hear from you today. Or you desire to start a campus. You are burning with a passion to start a power city campus in your locality. Send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina, and indicate your desire to start a campus in your locality. And we'll put together, you know, people around that area that follow my teachings. And if there's none, you start one and you become the light in the midst of darkness. What a blessing. What a privilege to be so used by God to lighten the dark places of the earth. Finally, the Abel Dabina Online Mentoring Academy is registering right now. Those of you that really want me to mentor you one-on-one, -on -one, spend time with you, teach you, answer your questions, bring clarity, and follow you up, and just spend time following and tracking your growth and bringing you more word on a personal level in the next one year. All you need to do is shoot a mail today to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. If you are privileged to speak to any mentee of this academy, the experience is beyond words. The experience of the academy is beyond words. We just graduated batch A and B, batch C is on right now, and we're recruiting another team of mentees beginning from September. So we're receiving applications right now and signing people on. All you need to do is shoot a mail today to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com, and we'll make sure you get all the forms quickly, get you registered before the first week of September, 2019. It's a privilege and a joy. I'd like you to fasten your seat belts right now. And don't forget to share this video as I take you right now into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. The vanity of self-righteousness and overcoming sin consciousness. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 19. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. We know, Brother Paul prayed prayers for the church in Philemon 1, 6, that the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging the word knowledge, accurate knowledge. We know, acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ. The degree to which your faith becomes effectual 
will be dependent on how much you acknowledge the good things that are in you in Christ. We know, therefore, we shall assure our hearts, knowledge, the prayer of Paul for the church in Ephesus, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know, the same prayer for the church in Colossians, the same prayer for the church in Thessalonians, that you may come to a place of knowledge. It is that knowledge that you will use to assure your heart. If you're ignorant of who you are, you can't assure your heart. And we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Next verse. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. That's very fundamental. If your Bible was mine, I will underline confidence toward God. Not just confidence, but confidence toward God. Confidence in my relationship with God. Confidence in how I operate with God. When a man is not confident towards God, he will pray and not be sure his prayer is answered. When a man is not confident towards God, he will worship a God he does not know. When a man is not confident towards God, he can't trust the word of God. If God says something, he can't trust it because he's not confident towards God. And you can't be confident towards God when you are in condemnation. So if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. And as a result of our confidence towards God, look at the resultant effect in the next verse. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because our hearts are confident towards God, we are assured whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. What are his commandments? We know. That is one commandment. We know, and because we know, we have done what we ought to do. We have assured our heart. So since we have assured our hearts, no condemnation in our hearts. No condemnation in our hearts. Condemnation paralyzes your ability to receive from God. Condemnation weakens your ability to receive from God. So we assure our hearts so we are free from condemnation. The believer in Christ Jesus must operate as if sin never existed. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? Say with me very loud, I am in Christ Jesus. Therefore, there is no condemnation. No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation comes from guilt. Guilt. Guilt comes from sin consciousness. Sin consciousness Guilt, condemnation. The, the resultant effect of guilt is condemnation. What brings guilt is sin consciousness. It's not sin itself, the consciousness of sin. When you're always thinking of sin, when you're always thinking of maybe I have made a mistake, when you're always thinking of no mortal man can actually be right with God, when you're al always thinking of maybe I have done something wrong now, I'm not even sure of myself. When you live in assumption, when you live in doubt, you live in condemnation, you live in guilt, you cannot be confident towards God. Therefore, you cannot receive from the Lord. You cannot receive from the Lord. Look at Job chapter 1. Let me give you an illustration of a man that is in condemnation or sin consciousness. Job chapter 1, give me verse 4. And his sons went and feasted in their houses. Everyone is there and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings. He offered burnt offerings. Just because the children were feasting, they were enjoying themselves, they had party, and they were celebrating themselves, and the father became worried that their parties must have been an offense to God. 
There are people who believe that as a believer, if you enjoy, you are in sin. There are people who believe that a Christian is not supposed to enjoy. He's supposed to suffer and just suffer till he dies. Look at one illustration here. Job started sanctifying and offering sacrifices to God according to the numbers of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned. It may be, I'm not even sure, sin consciousness. It may be that my sons have sinned. The man had no confidence towards God. The man was in guilt and condemnation, sin consciousness. And what was the action that followed that sin consciousness and caused God in their hearts? Thus did Job continually. So everything Job did all the time was because he was not sure of righteousness. He was living in sin consciousness. Maybe my children have sinned against God and caused God. Let me offer sacrifice. He was not offering sacrifice in faith. He was not offering sacrifice as worship to God. He offered sacrifice to fear. He offered sacrifice to sin consciousness. Actually, when there is sin consciousness, fear will be predominant. Sin consciousness breeds fear. Let's offer sacrifice. Let's give to make sure that we do not fall on the other side of God. He was not walking in faith. He was walking in fear. He was walking in guilt. He was walking in sin consciousness. And because that is what his disposition was, it became a fertilized ground for satanic oppression. When you are in guilt and condemnation, when you are in fear and sin consciousness, you have created an enabling environment for Satan to function. You have created an atmosphere for Satan to have a field day. Fear, sin consciousness, guilt, condemnation are weapons in the hands of the enemy to paralyze the believers from receiving what is theirs and to keep you far from relating with God. If our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive because we are in confidence. So there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. James chapter 1 verse 6. But let him ask in faith, not in wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toast. Verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. He didn't say let not that man think that the Lord will give him something. No. He said let not that man think that he shall receive. The word receive implies it has been given. Let not that man think that he shall receive because it has been given. Let him not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So, a man that is double-minded cannot receive anything from the Lord. What makes a man double-minded? When he lacks confidence towards God. A double-minded man is a man that does not have confidence towards God. A double-minded man is a man who does not have consistency of expectation from God. He cannot receive. God has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in Christ. God has given you the earth and the fullness thereof. But you cannot take delivery. You cannot lambano. That's the Greek word. Lambano. You cannot take. You cannot seize. You cannot receive anything from the Lord because you are double-minded. Why are you double-minded? Because your heart is not assured on God. You still believe somewhere that sometimes God justifies and sometimes God is the one destroying people for sin. You still believe in your heart that sometimes God is good and sometimes God can be bad. You still believe in your heart that God cannot be trusted. That if God says something, you don't have to trust it. You must have a plan B in case God fails. Your heart is not assured. You are still in double 
double-mindedness. And he says, let not that man think. James chapter 1 verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Receive with meekness. First of all, he says you should lay apart all filthiness. To lay apart is the Greek word apototemai. It means to renounce. To renounce means to renounce a thought in your heart. Because these thoughts are in your heart. The word heart there is not heart but mind. Because sometimes the word heart refers to the mind. Cast down those thoughts in your mind. It's an active word. You lay apart all filthiness. The word rufaria in the Greek, it means pollution, a field, wickedness. In verse 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Next verse. How do you do that? But be doers of the word and not hear us only deceiving your own selves. The word deceiving your own selves is the Greek word paralogizomai. It means you have an unassured personality. You are acting beside yourself or you are acting another person's script or you are pretending to be somebody else or you are pretending to be who you are not. Paralogizomai. Acting beside yourself, deceiving yourself. It's like you act in a drama, and in the drama you acted a dog, and you are backing on the floor. Whoa, 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 whoa. In you, you know that that is not who you are. You are just acting. When you are self-deceived, and you do not act the word of God, you are acting a script that is not yours. Anything outside the word of God is not you. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word. You are born of the word. So anything that is not the word of God is not you. And because it's not you, you are acting beside yourself. You are pretending to be who you are not. You have personality crisis. What did I say? Personality crisis. You are acting somebody else. You are acting contrary to who you are. You are pretending to be who you are not. Acting beside yourself. So you lay apart all of this. How do you lay apart all of the field and the superfluity of nothingness? By acting in the world. By doing the world. When you do the word, you cannot contain and accommodate the superfluity of naughtiness. He said, and receive the engrafted word with meekness. Once you receive the engrafted word with meekness, and you accept what the word says you are, filled and naughtiness leaves you. Acting beside yourself leaves you because you can't function in both of them. First John chapter 3 verse 19. Hereby we know that we are of the truth. Somebody say, I am of the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. We know. You must know it. You are bought with a prize. You are of the truth. First John chapter 5 verse 12. He that had the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You are of the truth. You are of the Son. You have life. Next verse. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Next verse. And this is the confidence. If our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. We have confidence towards God. 
So whatsoever we ask, we receive. This is our confidence. Next verse. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Can somebody say powerful amen? amen. Look at Jude chapter 1 verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God. We assure our hearts. Who is to assure your heart? You assure your heart yourself. So Jude say, keep yourselves in the love of God. The same thing brother John is saying. We assure our hearts. Keep yourselves. He didn't say God will keep you. He didn't say ask God to keep you. He said you. Keep yourselves in the love of God. You must keep yourself not in your love, but you keep yourself in the love of God. How can you keep yourself in the love of God? You keep yourself in the love of God by knowing. By knowing. Ephesians 3.19 And to know the love of God. Keep yourself in the love of God and to know the love of God. How do you keep yourself in the love of God? By knowing the love of God, which passeth knowledge. When you know the love of God, you are filled with all the fullness of God. Keep yourself in the love of God. Go back to Jude one twenty one. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep yourselves in the love of God. How do you keep yourselves in the love of God? We know the love that God has for us. We know the love of God. 1 John chapter 4 verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Next verse. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Not our love, his love. We keep ourselves in his love. Next verse. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he had given us of his spirit. How do we know that we are in God? Because we have the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of immortality in mortality. Next verse. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Next verse. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. 16. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Give me verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect. Hallelujah. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness. Perfected love gives us boldness. How is our love perfected? We have known and believe the love that God has to us. We keep ourselves in the love of God. We assure our hearts. No condemnation. We assure our hearts. No doubt. We assure our hearts. No wrath. We assure our hearts in the love that God has for us. We have known and believed the love that God has to us. Say with me very loud, I know and I believe the love that God has for me. Now say with me, I know the love of God. Therefore, I am filled with all the fullness of God. Shout amen to that. When you know the love that God has for you, you will be free from fear totally. You will have no fear of anything, including death itself. When you know the love that God has for you. You will not be afraid of terror. You will not be afraid of arrow. You will not be afraid of human conspiracy. 
You will not be afraid of human enmity and hatred. And you will not be afraid of anything. The love of God is bigger than all of that. The love of God is bigger than all your enemies put together. It's bigger than the threat of the devil. The love of God is bigger than all the sorrows and problems that this life can offer. We have known and believe the love that God has for us. Many don't believe the love because they don't know it. Many don't believe the love because they don't know it. When you, when you find it difficult to believe in the love of God, you will find it difficult to receive the love of God. When you find it difficult to believe the love of God, you will find it difficult to receive the love of God. When you find it difficult to receive the love of God, you will find it difficult to give the love of God. The love of God is not an emotion. It's a sacrifice of his son and everything that comes with it. He that spared not his son but gave him up for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The love of God is demonstrated. God demonstrated his love to us also. The love of God is demonstrated in the death of Christ. The love of God is not an emotion. It's not an emotion. The love of God is demonstrated in the death of Christ. And of course in his resurrection. James 1.25 But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, somebody say continue. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. He looks at who he is in Christ. He continues to look. And some people, the problem for them being double-minded is that they look at who they are in Christ, but they do not consider it. They just look. When they're in church, they say, I am who God says I am. When they go out, they say something else. You are deceiving yourself. When they are in church, they say it. I have what God says I have. When they go out, they say something else. You are deceiving yourself because you are not continuing in what you see. Are you here? Praise God. Say with me, I continue looking into the perfect law. So you look at who you are in Christ. When you lack focus on Christ, you produce filthiness. Filthy thoughts about God are a byproduct of lacking the right focus. When you are not focusing on Christ, of course, the only thing a man can produce is filth. The only thing a mortal man can produce is filth. Once you lose focus on Christ, you produce filth. Fear is filth. Doubt is filth. Unbelief is filth. And sin is a lack of focus. He that looketh into the perfect law of liberty, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. He be not a forgetful hearer. To get rid of filth is to look at the mirror of God's word. Look at the mirror of God's word and not forget. Look at the mirror of God's word and not lay it aside. What will read my mind of these filthy things? Law of perfect liberty. You stay on the law of perfect liberty. What is the law of perfect liberty? The New Testament. You stay in the law of perfect liberty, which is the New Testament. Read your mind of things that are not Christ-minded. And you must be consistent. You continue, you continue, you continue looking. Not hearing, uh, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. 
and the next moment you are hearing arresting the arrester. With one mind you hear, you are blessed. With another mind you hear, steps to the blessing. One moment you hear, you are anointed. Another moment you hear, seven keys to the anointing. You become confused. One moment you hear, you have all that pertains to life and godliness. Another moment you hear, things to do to activate God's goodness. You're confused. You've got to continue looking into the mirror. You've got to continue looking at Christ. One moment you hear, you are complete in Christ. Then another moment you go and hear how to overcome Pharaoh. How to overcome Pharaoh. Where? In Christ. We produce the kind of conscience we have, whether it's an evil conscience or a Christ consciousness. We are the ones who produce our conscience. Your conscience is your making. Whatever you allow in your heart makes your conscience. You assure yourself by yourself. Mind the movies you watch. Even Christian movies, they have a way of distorting your opinion of God. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Assure your hearts. Hello. Assure your hearts with the word. I am what the word says I am. I thought somebody will say that. Somebody say, I assure my heart. Somebody say, my heart is being established with grace. Somebody say, I'm looking at Jesus. His office, his work, and his name. I thought I would hear a powerful amen. So when he said looking unto Jesus, he's not saying imagine something. He's saying look at his office, look at his sacrificial work, and look at what his name has made available. He's my father. He's not my uncle. Hallelujah. God is not God to me. He's father to me. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Somebody said to me very loud, I have righteousness consciousness. I don't have sin consciousness. Now, if you observe, Jesus said to preach the acceptable year of the Lord full stop. Did you see that? Isaiah 61 verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Go back to verse 2. Is verse 2 I'm looking for. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. That is the prophecy. In the fulfillment, Luke chapter 4 verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord, 20. And he closed the book. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord and he closed the book. What is missing? What is missing? So Jesus didn't come to preach vengeance. He came to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He omitted vengeance and he closed the book. So today is not the day of vengeance because Jesus didn't preach it. He closed the book. Why did he close the book and why didn't he speak vengeance? Look at verse 20 of Luke. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. Next verse. And he began to say, this day is this scripture fulfilled. Which scripture is fulfilled? The acceptable year of the Lord. This is the day of the fulfillment of the acceptable year of the Lord. This is not the day of vengeance. 
the other side of God. <laughs> really? How many sides does he have? Jesus quoted from that scripture. And he said, no, this is not the day of vengeance. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus never spoke about vengeance. And Jesus didn't even quote vengeance. What is vengeance? Is the word nakum. Nakum, N-A-Q-U-M. Something you do to, to an enemy. Nakum, vengeance. Something you do to an enemy. It is used in the Old Testament for a quarrel between two people. Venging your anger towards an enemy. Venging your anger towards an enemy. Acceptable here is the Greek word ratson. Ratson means favor. Where do we see favor? When an employee wants a leave from the employer, you see favor in operation when his request is granted. Favor is what Jesus brought, the favor of God. Hallelujah. You pray for favor and you go to your boss and you say, boss, I need two days to take care of some business. And he says you can have 14 days. That's favor. That's favor. Oh, boss, I need some money to do some things. I know you've paid me my salary. I don't know if you can just be kind enough to help me. Is that how much is your salary? Is it 25,000? He said, I'm giving you 50,000 dash. What is that? Favor. Jesus said, this is the day of favor. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. I'm preaching good. This is not the day of vengeance. Anybody preaching vengeance to you has taken you behind the cross. He has taken you far from Jesus. Oh, it sounds nice to say, let my enemies die. God punish my enemies. Let my enemies just have accident. Let their intestines fall out. It feels nice to the flesh to say that. But that's not the gospel of Christ. And if you're praying such prayers, you're far from God. You're far from God. Let me ask all of you a very simple question. The man who is in Sambisa forest, kidnapping wives and children and husbands and killing them, and the man who says he's a man of God with a suit and tie, with a microphone, with a Bible, who is praying and commanding people to die all over the place. Die, 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 die. What is the difference between this pastor and the people in Sambisa Forest that are killing people? Is there any difference? Those pastors are full of the headsmen. They are Boko Haram. There's no difference. All of them are killers. All of them is the same thing they are doing. Both the man that killed physically and the man that uses his mouth to kill, they are the same. In fact, Jesus took it up to another level. He that hated his brother is a murderer. And no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. I'm teaching good. I, I wish some of them are watching me right now. Today is not the day of vengeance. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. Oh, this is the day when the free favors of God profusely abound. We have the profuse favor of God. Amen. Rats in acceptable year. It means here, when someone is owing you and you discharge the debt, you discharge their sins or you discharge their debts, we are sins are forgiven and debts are discharged. Same word for year, same word for day, same word for season, or same word for time of favor. This is the acceptable day, acceptable year, acceptable season, acceptable time of the favor of God. Favor and vengeance can be in the same verse. But Isaiah put it in the same verse because of their spiritual state. They were spiritually dead men, so they didn't know better. They were combining things together. 
But remember, Jesus came to redefine things. And when Jesus stood, he said, I'm not here for judgment. I did not come to condemn men, but I came to draw men to repentance. I did not come to destroy men. I came to receive men. This is the day of the acceptance of God or the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. So vengeance cannot be the spirit of Christ. Vengeance cannot be the spirit of Christ. In the Greek, the word favor is the word dictum. It means to be accepted in spite of your guilt. John the Baptist also made some errors. Matthew 3, 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. I love John the Baptist. He says some things that were profound, but he also made some errors. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He will not use water to baptize you. Did you see that? Did you see that in that verse? Look well. Look well. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall not baptize you with water. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. Holy Ghost and with fire. <laughs> Acceptable year of the Lord, day of vengeance. Holy Ghost and with fire. Fire here wasn't the same on the day of Pentecost. No, on the day of Pentecost, there was no fire on the people. And somebody said, no, no, no. The book of Acts says, there appeared unto them Clothing tongues as of as of means it was a metaphor. It wasn't fire. They were not carrying fire on their head. It was a metaphor. The tongues were clothing as of metaphorically. The tongues were like like fire. They were not fire. It was a metaphor. A, a, a method of communication. Luke 3, 16 to 17. John answered, saying unto them, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John the Baptist still talking. What about Mark? What did Mark say? Mark 1, 8. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. No fire. What did John say? John 1, 33. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which shall baptize with the Holy Ghost. No fire. Teaching good. You cannot use the Holy Ghost for destruction. He does not destroy. So when Jesus was talking about the baptism, let Jesus authenticate this matter. Because some people said with fire, John the Baptist, Mark didn't say, John didn't say. So let's have Jesus draw a conclusion on the matter. Jesus is the revelation of God. So let, what did Jesus say? Acts 1.5. Jesus speaking now. For John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Did Jesus use fire? Good. What did John say? When he comes, did John say when he comes, he shall baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now he has come. Let him speak for himself. When he comes, now he has come. Let him speak for himself. He now said, for John truly baptized with water. Now he is talking for himself. But you shall be baptized. Since I am the baptizer, let me tell you, I will baptize you. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. No fire. Am I teaching? 
you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. If you read the book of Acts carefully, you will not see fire attached to the Holy Ghost anywhere throughout the book of Acts. Jesus didn't mention fire because fire was not his ministry. His ministry is the acceptable year of the Lord. The day when the favors of God profusely abounds to mankind. And wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, as your amen will come like thunder, enjoy the ministry of Jesus. The ministry of Jesus is the ministry of God's favor. Jesus is God's favor to man. You didn't hear what I just said. Jesus is God's favor to man. God gave us Jesus as a sign that God has favored us. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. God gave us his favor as a sign that God has favored us. God has what? God has what? He has favored us by giving us his son. In Acts of the Apostles, when the Holy Ghost came on them with cloven tongues as a fire, the fire did not destroy anybody. Moreover, it was not fire. It was just a metaphor. Why didn't Jesus quote vengeance? Because this is the day of salvation. This is the day of salvation. This is the day. How do I know? 2 Corinthians 6 to us, a roundup. For he saith, I have had thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We are in the day of favor. People's sins are discharged. People's sins are discharged. We are seen abounds. Grace much more abounds. Don't give God credit for what Satan does. You didn't hear me. Don't give God credit for what Satan does. God is good only. God is not good and evil. God is good only. We have the ministry of reconciliation. We have the message of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. We have the ministry of reconciliation. We have the message of reconciliation. The word reconciliation is the word dilasso. It means two people, me and you quarreled. Then we got angry. Then after some time, we came together, sat down, and said, let's go go resolve the matter. You, this is what you did. Then me to I say, you, this is what you did. Then he said, okay, I'm sorry. Then he also says, I am sorry. And then they reconcile. Dilasso, reconciliation. Some of you think we have reconciled with God. Me and God, we have reconciled. You know, we've been quarreling with God since I was born. But now I'm 25. I am of age. There's no need to be quarreling again. Then you ask him, what is the basis for your quarrel? I'm just quarreling. I'm just quarreling with God. But I have decided to reconcile with God. God, come. The way you killed my mother when I was small, I'm not happy with you. And when I look around, all my friends that were with me in school were in a bus and they had an accident and you took all their lives. I'm not happy with you. But I have changed my mind because now I am a young adult. I want us to make peace. Then God said, okay, I'm sorry. Then you too say, I'm sorry. Then God said, give me your hand. Then you now reconcile. That's not what happened though. <laughs> we didn't have a dilasso with God. No, we and God never sat down to reconcile. While you are yet sinners. So that's not what happened. What happened was catalasso. That's what Paul uses. Catalasso, not dilasso. Catalasso is when one party does everything. Does everything and woos the other party to accept what he has done. God did everything. I mean, Catalasso. Our gospel does not say, come to God. Our gospel says, God has come to you. Our gospel does not say, come to God. Our gospel says, God has come to you. And it doesn't matter what you have done, he has forgiven you all. That's the gospel we preach. The gospel of the forgiveness of sins. The gospel of what? 
the forgiveness of sins. The gospel of the forgiveness of sins. We have reconciliation with God through a third party. We have reconciliation with God through a third party. Who is the third party? Christ. Christ died for us. The wages of sin is what? Death. So Christ died for us. Touch your neighbor and say, this is the day of God's favor. Enjoy that favor. As a scripture I will close with, as is Romans 6.23. Give me the message translation. Work hard for sin your whole life and your pension is dead. Did you see that? Work hard for sin your whole life and your pension is dead. But God's gift is real life, eternal life, delivered by Jesus, our master. There are many pensioners in the payroll of sin. And God is telling them, you don't need to work for me. My own is a gift. You worked for sin. It gave you a pension debt. My own, come, don't work for me. Receive a gift, life. Is that good news or what? Amen. Stand on your feet as close your service. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am free from guilt. I am free from sin consciousness. I am free from condemnation. Now somebody shout very loud, I assure my heart. I have known and I believe the love that God has for me. Amen. I'd like you to shout it very loud if you know God loves you. Shout it louder than your neighbor. Let me see if God loves you more than your neighbor. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. What you're going to shout is, God loves me. No, say, let, let it be louder than your neighbor. Get more love than your neighbor. Get more love. Are you ready for more love? All right. Who does he love more in this service? Does he love you? Somebody shout, I receive the love of God. I keep my heart in the love of God. Now say louder, I assure myself. God's love for me is wide, long. High, I can never get over it. Shout yes. And to know the love of God, which passeth all knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh, glory to God. Ooh, Somebody say, I keep myself in the love of God. Where do you keep yourself? Where do you keep yourself? And perfect love cast out fear. When you keep yourself in the love of God, you are not afraid. You fear nothing. And you fear no one. God loves me. Evil will not overcome me. God loves me. Terror shall not befall me. God loves me. Disease and failure cannot come to me. I keep myself in the love of God. And when you keep yourself in the love of God, you are secured. The love of God is the security of the believer. You didn't hear what I just said. The love of God is the security of the believer. You stay in the love of God. Nothing will come against the love of God. You know who the love of God is? Jesus. Jesus is the love of God. And so when you keep yourself in Jesus, you are eternally secure. Then your heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. You're not afraid of evil tidings. You're not afraid of rumor. You're not afraid of blackmail. You're not afraid of enchanters. You're not afraid of diviners. You're not afraid of sorcerers. If they throw a charm on you, you collect it. And ask who, who is interested? Is there anybody interested? You carry the charm and be playing with. Who is interested? Who is interested? Okay, if nobody, you throw it in the fire. Shout yes! No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Somebody say, I keep myself, I keep myself in the love of God. You stay there. When evil news is coming, say, I am in the love of God. When they are talking about disaster, say, I am in the love of God. When they are talking of failure, 
I am in the love of God. When they are talking about people planning against you, I am in the love of God. I keep myself in the love of God. When the doctor says you have high blood pressure, <laughs> say in Christ, in Christ, Christ. <laughs> there can be no high blood pressure in Christ. The doctor must be seeing something that is not here. <laughs> I cannot have high blood pressure. I am where? Keep yourself in the love of God. Keep yourself in the love of God and assure your heart and know that whatever you have asked of God, you receive of him. I decree and declare right now as your amen will come like thunder, everything you've been asking for is released right now. Every door you've been knocking at has just opened right now. Everything you've been seeking for, you have just found it. 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 Have just found it. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. And I decree by the finished work of Christ, nothing is denied you. You are blessed beyond measure. You are kept by the power of God. You are sustained in the grace of God. You are assured in the love of God. You are secured in Christ. You are kept in Christ. You are protected in Christ. Great grace is upon you. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a word. Please don't go away. Please don't go away. I have some important things to share with you today before we sign off this broadcast. It's such a joy to be able to bring you the word of his grace, which is building you up every day and bringing clarity of your inheritance to you in Christ Jesus. I want to first of all commend those of you that have tirelessly followed the teaching of God's word on this platform morning afternoon nights every day in the last few years and i have discovered that since we dedicated ourselves to bringing you the word of his grace consistently on this platform we're noticing a lot of spiritual growth and explosion in the life of believers around the world and we thank god for the blessing of social media Today is going to be powerful. Do me a favor today. Invite a friend, a family, a loved one to hook up to this broadcast. Share the broadcast on your page. Please share the broadcast. We are aggressively on a campaign to flood the blue marble planet with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. So share the broadcast. Take the message. Drop them in WhatsApp groups. We are committed to Jesus Christ and his finished work. And as a mark of honor to him, we are aggressively invading every man's world with the goodness of Jesus Christ through the gospel of the kingdom. Let me also mention, for those of you that have followed for some time, if you do not have a church where you belong, it is not right for you to be isolated. The Bible says, he that isolates himself rages against all judgment. You need a family, a family of God, a church, a gathering together, a local assembly, where you can assemble with other brethren and eat the word of God together, grow together, you know, go for evangelism, Bring in new converts, disciple them, watch them grow. Because when you begin to grow in the things of the spirit, you become selfless. Selfishness goes, and selflessness is where service comes, where you want to be a blessing, you want to belong to a local church. Now, if you're in an area where there's no power city campus, and you don't belong to any local church, and you're looking for a gathering of believers who are feeding from this same table, send an email to me today, Damina at yahoo.com. We'll try to connect you with one. And if there's none around your area, we'll see how to start one immediately. Because it is vital for you not to dismiss the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some people is. It's so important. I'll be expecting to hear from you today. Or you desire to start a campus. You're burning with a passion to start a power city campus in your locality. Send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina, and indicate your desire to start a campus in your locality. And we'll put together, you know, people around that area that follow my teachings. And if there's none, you start one and you become the light in the midst of darkness. What a blessing. What a privilege to be so used by God to lighten the dark places of the earth. Finally, the Abel Dabina Online Mentoring Academy is registering right now. Those of you that really want me to mentor you one-on-one, -on -one, spend time with you, teach you, answer your questions, bring clarity, and follow you up and just spend time following and tracking your growth and bringing you more word on a personal level in the next one year. All you need to do is shoot a mail today 
to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. If you are privileged to speak to any mentee of this academy, the experience is beyond words. The experience of the academy is beyond words. We just graduated batch A and B, batch C is on right now, and we're recruiting another team of mentees beginning from September. So we're receiving applications right now and signing people on. All you need to do is shoot a mail today to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And we'll make sure you get all the forms quickly, get you registered before the first week of September 2019. It's a privilege and a joy. Praise God. Let's pray it again. Father, I pray for viewers out there right now that the revelation of Jesus grows big in their hearts until nothing else matters. We rebuke everything that is contrary and we declare sick bodies healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the power of your word today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Station.